minutes past eight. Time for the film review. Dangerous, ruthless murderer. And he has a whore as an accomplice. I am not a whore. I'm from England. The English whore. You a doc? I am a doctor. Got me a woman that I ain't working. Need you to fix it. The movie is called Good For Nothing, a uh, brand new spaghetti western, a Kiwi spaghetti western, um, but you uh, wouldn't be able to guess that so much, I think, by listening to the audio there. Lena Lamont has been and seen this one, and she joins us via Skype video today. Good morning, Lena. Hey, Wamo. And, um... Uh, it's funny you say spaghetti western. They've already coined a term for this. It's called a Pavlova western. <laughs> I kid does. you not. I didn't come up with that. I wish I had. Yeah. What, what else? Beer and barbecue western? Well, mm. we obviously got in there before the Aussies made theirs, though, otherwise they might have called it a Pavlova western. You never know. Yeah, and that's very true. So, okay, so um, so what's this about? Well, this is really interesting. It's beautifully made in central Otago, though at no point in the film does it actually say we're in central Otago, South Island of New Zealand. Um, it's very much... Uh, purporting to be a generic sort of western in a generic uh, South America, uh, as in Southern American kind of land. Yeah. Uh, it's put together, it was written and directed by a chap called Mike Wallace. It's basically a self-funded film. Mike Wallace and his fiancée, who plays the lead in the film, decided at some stage, do you know what, we want to make this movie, it's not easy getting funding in any other way, so we will simply, instead of buying a house, we will make a movie. And so he wrote and directed it. She stars in it. They've got a very good cast of a, a couple of familiar faces, but mainly people who are um, unknown enough for it to all feel a little bit foreign to us, mm. which probably helps in terms of its being made in New Zealand, but not purporting to be New Zealand, if you sure. know what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Um, do, do they manage to pull it off? Yeah, they... Most of the, yeah, for the most part, they absolutely do. It looks like a Western. It sounds like a Western. I mean, actually, if you look at the scenery in that trailer, it's extraordinary to think that there are parts of central Otago that look sufficiently like uh, the desert in Texas or Nevada or whatever. I mean, yeah. it's extraordinary. I, and the landscape is really stunning. And absolutely, you know, I guess they're going to say this about New Zealand films, uh, for, you know, till kingdom come, but basically if you make a film in New Zealand, we've got our beautiful scenery and landscape. It's always going to be uh, uh, a character in itself, but it completely works. Uh, and the characters, um, Ing, uh, I believe her name is Inga Rademeyer. Now, uh, Inga's from South Africa originally, but is a, a Kiwi now. She does a largely a very good British accent. It's terribly funny in the trailer where they say she's a whore, and she goes, "I'm not a whore. I'm Eng I'm from England." Uh, like that couldn't possibly be, you know, related. Yeah. Um, but uh, so occasionally, a little bit of English accent slips into slightly South African. But you know what? Blind man would like to see it. I don't know. I don't know whether international audiences are going to pick that up. And uh, it's very interesting how our New Zealand cast playing. Uh, Western cowboys and vagabonds uh, and outlaws, they largely do a very good job of, of, of being uh, from the southern states of the United States of America. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's narratively, it's it's clever and it's, uh, it's funny. Certainly I laughed out loud actually quite a lot of times watching this film. But narratively, Westerns are fairly straightforward, aren't they? You've got a kind of a good guy or maybe a bad guy who you're rooting for and then other bad guys who are on his tail. And that's basically the narrative arc of this film. But the point of it is the, uh, the, the burgeoning relationship between this chap, uh, the, the outlaw, who's just called the man or the outlaw, and uh, his, uh, the, the young woman that he kidnaps and, and takes with him for uh, um, unseemly purposes. Yes. And, and they, they are taking the genre seriously, though, aren't they? Like they, they, they are treating this very seriously, yeah? Yes. 
I would say absolutely. It's not meant to be like um, a Mel Brooks kind of spoof, men in tights kind of, you right. know. It's, it's not meant to be a mockery at all, but they do play with it a little bit. They are playful with it. And I think that's what makes it enjoyable. I think actually if they had made it completely serious yeah. without the deadpan humor in it, then maybe people would be going, well, actually, this doesn't quite work and it's a little bit lame, like your horse, you know, or something. But um, So I wonder, but, I wonder what, how yeah. this would be um, accepted back in Hollywood. You know, would there be some kind of oddity? Yeah, it's not Kiwi enough. For people abroad to think this is a New Zealand movie, mm. so I don't know whether people abroad would be watching it and thinking this is a Western. It could be could have been made by Americans who sometimes slip the accent slips or whatever. I, d I don't know actually. I think it's an oddity in a lot of ways, and, and not least of which is probably that it isn't easily categorizable. I mean, for us, it's a Pavlova Western because nobody ain't made a, a classic. Um, as you say, spaghetti western type movie in this mm. country before. I, I'm not quite apart, sure. But I mean, apart mm. from the um, the Cadbury Crunchy ad back in the well, day. Well, yeah, and somebody actually posted on a, a message board and said, "What about Utu?" But I think that's ta that's western genre in a in a broader sense, but but not the whole thing of there's a cowboy and there's a horse and there's a girl who who yeah. wears this wonderful sort of you know clinched in bustier top the whole time and 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 has all the auspices of a classic western. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Well, I suppose I mean back in the back in the day, the 1800s, um, if you were living in Central Otago, things might have looked pretty similar to, to pretty much like that film. well yeah. that's true that's true and they've obviously used ranches that have been around for a long time uh, mm. look it totally works I actually I I do encourage people to go see this because it's a very very enjoyable film uh, and it's really beautifully done oh and the other thing to mention is the soundtrack is spectacular now the soundtrack is um, locally uh, composed and performed by the NZSO. Yeah. Uh, fantastic soundtrack that really does work with Western, the Western genre, and uh, you yeah. know you can you can hear elements of doo -doo 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 <laughs> and all, well, I mean not specifically that, but do you know what I mean? It sounds like a Western should, do, and do it's you know very who wrote exciting. It? Is, is that is that anywhere in the details? Who wrote the, wrote the um, the soundtrack? I should know, and I apologise to the gentleman for not having his name off the top of my head. John someone? There you go. That will narrow it down in New Zealand. Hmm. Sarthus? Are you looking it up? Sa um, what's his name, John? Sarthus? 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 Oh, I'm showing my ignorance there, but it could be. Anyway, um, mm. now, uh, so, okay, that's good. Good for Nothing uh, is the name of that film. Now, you're about to head overseas. Yes. So um, I'm off this weekend. Um, I'll do a quick jaunt through Los Angeles. I might uh, phone in some sort of bragging review to you if I get to see anything cool while I'm in L.A. Then I'm heading over to the Cannes Film Festival. So I'm very keen to keep in touch with you, Whammo, and uh, report on oh. the, uh, the adventures at Cannes. What are you looking forward to seeing there? Ah, oh, there's so much. Um, I have to rein in the excitement. Um, things that might be of interest to our listeners, um, the... Uh, Walter Salas has made a film of On the Road, Jack Kerouac's On the Road. Um, so that'll be headlining in a lot of ways. Uh, that's got Sam Riley, who was in Control and Brighton Rock. Good old Kristen Stewart from Twilight. I suppose she's got to make an appearance in everything nowadays, doesn't she? Um, so On the Road, that's eagerly anticipated. Walter Salas did the Motorcycle Diaries back in the day. So uh, superb, I think, Brazilian uh, filmmaker. Um, I'm very excited about... A film, uh, a lot of people will say it's the latest Brad Pitt movie, and that, to be honest with you, is not what's, uh, what appeals to me, but it's a film by a New Zealand-born director called Andrew Dominic, and Andrew made The Assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford with Brad Pitt some years ago. He also did The Chopper movie. Uh, I think that was his first film. Yeah. I have a feeling Jesse James was his second, and therefore this one, Killing Me Softly, again with Brad Pitt as his third movie. Very, very, very keen to see this. Absolutely can't wait. Have horribly high hopes, and they may be dashed. We'll see. Um, the chap who made Gamora. Did you see Gamora? I a did. A couple of years ago? About, right. Yeah. Gang, gang film right. um, in Italy, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, a Sicilian mafioso film, exactly. And, uh, well, Matteo uh, Garone has made a... Um, his, his next film is out. Uh, let me just refer to... to called Reality. Mm, well, Gamora was horribly realistic, so mm. I suppose we're in for more of the same. I'm not sure. Michael Haneke has got another film out. Cronenberg, both Cronenbergs, 
David's got a film out, and Brandon, who I'm assuming to be his son, but I'll look into that, might be a nephew, um, has got a film out as well. So quite a lot, quite a lot to see. And then, of course, a whole lot that I couldn't possibly anticipate what it's going to be, right, and I'll right. wind up in a press screening and, and come out and go, that was the best film I've ever seen, and I never even knew it, you know? That is going to be exciting times. We really look forward to um, catching up with you on the road um, Same. And, and hearing about your exploits over there. And uh, just just hopping back to um, Good For Nothing, you say John, mm. I say Sarthus, and boom. Na- oh, nail yes, on the head. there we are. He did the, um, he composed the soundtrack to Good For Nothing, so there you go, that's good. Um, and it's a fantastic soundtrack. So, yeah, yeah. Go, go out and see the film. Nice, all right, and um, we'll go out on a little bit of the film. Thank you very much, uh, Lena Lamont, and uh, we'll see you on the ropes. Son of a bitch. Ain't dead yet.